One of my viewers asked me if I can make a reaction to this video. It's German culture shocks as an American student. And from my making reactions to my videos so far, I've seen there's a very big difference between life in the USA and life in Germany. As I mentioned many times, I'm from the UK, so I think maybe lifestyle in Germany is a lot more similar to UK as opposed to America. But I'm really interested to see what culture shocks this American student had when she moved to Germany. I'm going to start with some of the really big kind of basic things. And then I'm going to go into maybe smaller stuff, stuff that's more to my personal experience, tell some funny stories and things like that. So I'm going to start with Sundays. So basically on Sundays in Germany, a lot of things close. This is a really common one. You'll find most grocery stores and shops are closed. So if you want to go shopping or something like that, you really should try to do it on Saturday. And if you want food to cook on Sunday, you really should get the food in advance because I'm pretty sure almost every single grocery store is closed on Sundays and there's also a lot of public holidays in Germany where things are closed as well um, which is kind of different for me because I think in America almost nothing closes sometimes places are open even on holidays so it's kind of an interesting difference but I do kind of like that because Sunday has a very peaceful and calm feeling because of that so since I mentioned yeah, I think that's actually similar in the UK like actually not so much these days but it definitely was 10, 15 years ago, Sunday was a, a, the day when most places closed. I don't know if it's like tied to religion, how it used to be like Sunday was the day everybody went to church like decades ago in the UK. So it just carried on that most places closed on a Sunday or closed early. I think recently <coughs> that's changed and now it's kind of just a normal day. But I actually like the sound of that that you can have that day just to kind of chill don't need to worry too much about going here and there you can just relax and have a nice day go to the park do some cool stuff with your friends uh, tell me what you think about sunday being a quieter day than the rest of the week in germany grocery stores i'm gonna just go into this whole topic because this is one that i feel like there's very many aspects about this whole grocery shopping experience that are different in Germany. So the first thing I'm going to start with is that grocery stores tend to be smaller here. Coming from the US, we have Target, Walmart, Publix, Kroger, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. So the popular grocery stores here are Aldi, which does exist in America, um, Penny, Reva, Etika, all of those ones. And um, they tend to be a little bit smaller which I actually think has benefits. For example, if I was in the checkout counter at Target and I realized I forgot the milk, there's no way I'm making it while I'm standing in line because that milk is in the back of the store and I would have to run and yeah, it just doesn't work. Grocery bags are not free. They charge uh, like five cents or 10 cents. Yeah, that's the same in the UK bag. as well. Same here in Malaysia. Plastic one or also sometimes they have a little um, canvas material one, which is um, one that I purchased. And this actually, I think, has good benefits for the environment because it encourages people to bring their own grocery bags. So those are small differences. I would say the biggest difference in terms of grocery stores is the lack of grocery baggers. What I'm used to is the person that scans the items and then the person that bags the items. <laughs> I also sometimes bag my own items, but they are- That is such a first world problem, man. Like, I mean, I don't think in the UK I've ever seen a bagger. Maybe sometimes they'll bring in like, children who are doing charity work or they bring older people in is like a, a, for some reason and they'll have people put in bags but it's just expected that you'll put your own things in your own bag. It's actually quite funny just to hear someone say that there's not baggers there but if again if you're from Germany tell me what you think about having smaller supermarkets if you've lived outside Germany or been outside Germany how does it compare to having those big huge supermarkets like in the UK we have both we have the smaller ones and the bigger ones as well so you can choose where to go we have Lido we have Aldi for me like I guess I live in Asia now so it's not really relevant but my parents they'll go to the bigger supermarkets for some things go to Aldi and Lido for other things go to different ones and kind of mix it up I guess it's good to have that choice sometimes the bigger ones have obviously more variety you can get more things but Sometimes you just want, the, if you know what you're getting, you maybe go to the smaller ones because it can be cheaper in Aldi and Lido as well. They're so efficient. And I noticed the beers just here. Is that Beck's beer in the background? Germany, and they are scanning items 
every single second and slide them over and it is your responsibility to put them in your bag, which is fine. But I tend to get a little stressed because the queue or the line at the grocery store can be so long and they're scanning, you know, 30 items. If you're going grocery shopping for a week, it could be a huge amount of stuff and you're rapidly trying to like put the items in the bag while simultaneously paying. And sometimes they have a little divider, but sometimes they don't and they'll just start scanning the next person's items and it's really <laughs> a pressure. I don't even care what order they're going in my bag. I just need to get them in my bag and run. Uh, of course, oh, if you're making man. smaller purchases, it's not stressful, but if you're really grocery shopping for the week, it could be quite a challenge to uh, put all your stuff away before the next person's items are scanned again. The next thing- I never thought it would be a high pressure situation to just put your groceries in a bag. That's quite funny to me, I guess, because like, I just grew up in a country where it's expected you put your own things in the bag. You just get used to kind of being quick and being organized and stuff like that. But maybe if you never did that, all these things just hurtling towards you down the down the tail. You must be like losing your mind. It must be quite uh, quite interesting. I guess you get you. She would get used to. The thing but. that I want to talk about is the lack of public bathrooms mm. for free. So this is one oh, that I do find in most of Europe. Public restrooms are normally, if you can find them, fifty cents to one euro to use the restroom. But because one of that, euro is quite expensive, actually, and nicer. So I find that people from America have two distinct points of view on this. Either they think, oh, that's a good idea because the bathrooms are cleaner, or they think I can go to a gas station in, in America at any point in my 10 hour road trip and use it for free. So I'm not going to pay the 50 cents to use the bathroom. So um, for me, I kind of have the first point of view. Usually the bathrooms I find are cleaner. When they're not cleaner, it's kind of annoying because you're like, I paid $1 for this disgusting bathroom. But anyway, or one euro. <laughs> the thing. Now, I think that's fair enough. Like even in the UK, so I think it's like, not all of them you have to pay, maybe 50-50 whether you have to pay, use a bat like a public bathroom or not. But the ones you do pay if they're a mess, and a lot of the ones where I'm from in Glasgow, you have to pay inside, it's a mess, there's water everywhere, like tissues everywhere. Yeah, that pisses me off, man. That is that is annoying. I can see our point of view there, but if she's saying in Germany, most of them are clean, I think that's fair enough. It's your pain to keep the place nice. Think about the water. So basically, water costs money but some restaurants will give you the tap water for free and some restaurants will charge you still for the tap water, um, which is kind of crazy. Sometimes when I order tap water at restaurants, um, I get a really dirty look, like Leitungswasser? Really? Is that I true? Mean, it is what it is. I get it. Maybe it's a little bit uncommon to order the tap water, but I'm someone that always needs to drink water when I'm eating a meal. So I do, me too, I don't actually. Like to pay to one or two euro for this tiny 0.2 liter bottle um, if I could also just ask for tap water because German tap water is very clean and it's some of the best tap water that I've had. So yeah, it's it's a it's, it's a thing. Another but I guess if the restaurant has to pay like a water bill, I guess it's fair enough that they charge, but it depends how much they actually charge for it. It depends if it's even available. Tell me more about that. That's an interesting topic because I drink a lot of water when I go out for food here in Malaysia, it's free. You can get ice water, water with ice, and it doesn't cost anything. So interested to know more Another about that. German culture shock that I have noticed in terms of style and fashion in my age group is that for college or university, students dress a lot nicer in Germany. And I kind of recognize this all the time because it's so cool to me when I was walking around on campus at the University of Cologne, everyone is dressed nice. It doesn't have to be super fancy, but usually I see boys wearing jeans and maybe a button up shirt and usually their hair is styled and they look nice. And that's kind of an interesting concept because I went to the University of Alabama and there's of course a range in every college of people who dress up and people who don't. But really, I think that you could wear your pajamas to class in America and no one would care. I don't think there's a big deal um, if you do either one, but I did notice that. The next culture shock that I want to speak about is crosswalks. So in America, we have something called jaywalking, which is just illegally crossing the street when it's not uh, the green walking symbol. Don't do this in Germany. <laughs> I speak from experience. In Germany, something I noticed, it's very structured, it's very efficient, there's many rules, there's bureaucracy, there's regulations, and rightfully so because it isn't safe to cross the street when it's not green. Um, I did this once. 
and they will yell at you. Uh, especially older people, they'll tell you don't do that. I think it's an interesting culture shock because I'm not putting anyone else at risk by me crossing the street, but it really- Well, maybe the driver over a car people. could be at risk. I think it risk. makes sense because you don't want to be influencing people to also illegally cross the street, but it's just kind of funny that really people yell at you about it. Okay guys, so this is probably my favorite culture shock that I witnessed when I was living in Germany last summer. And I don't even know if this is something that is applicable to all German universities because like I said, I only lived in Cologne and I only went to the University of Cologne. This story happened on a day during the final exam study period for students and I was going to the library, which is also called the Bib in Germany. And I was going with my like boyfriend to get some YouTube work done and I thought, a casual day we're gonna sit next to each other in the library and we're gonna just work on some stuff and leave it'll be really chill and Julian informed me that we had to go to the library at 8 45 because it opened at 9 and we show up to the library at 10 minutes before it opened like we were waiting in line to go into a concert and I walk up to the library and there is a swarm of students just crowded in front of the door waiting to go to the library to study and I had never seen this before because um, at my campus we have a lot of libraries I never have once gone when it first opened but I've never had an issue getting a seat most of the time sometimes during finals week it can be a little crazy but it's never anything like that we stand in line and everyone is kind of inching their way up and as the minutes count down and it's closer to nine o'clock everyone's pushing in and it's getting a little bit it's getting a little bit vicious. There was a left door and there was a right door and there was a old man who opened the doors when it was nine and he always opened the left door first and then the right door second. And so you had kind of a strategy. Did you want to wait on the left door and get in first? <laughs> Just to get into the library? Back in line, or did you want to be more in the front of the line on the right side of the door so that you would go in second but you're still at the front of the line. So there's a little bit of a strategy involved, but we chose to go on the left line. The old man opens the door and bless his soul because everyone starts running inside. I really almost got trampled. It was like Walmart on Black Friday level. And I start running with the Germans, like just running like, oh God, where are we going? And so you had to go down a hallway, turn right, go upstairs, hook around, and then you're in the library room with all the chairs. And so I'm like running and going as fast as I can. All of a sudden my boyfriend breaks out into a sprint. He's leaving me in the dust and I'm just like, what is going on? Yeah, <laughs> I really don't know what this was, but I'm assuming it happens like every single morning during final exam period. That's so stressful um, luckily, to go to Julian the library. saved us two spots because within a minute, every single seat in the library is full. And I think that's Why insane. Is that? So clearly there's a lack of space issue, which makes sense and everyone wants to study, but I truly have never Seen that before. I think that was very interesting, especially that part about the library. People like need to go to the library to study. I guess maybe there's not enough space at their homes, and uh, maybe they're sharing like in shared accommodation, so they don't have that quiet time at home to study. They prefer to go to the library. But I've never heard of a stampede to find a seat. But yeah, really interesting. All of them. I think, as I said before, I think a lot of that's similar to how lifestyle is in the UK for me. It, it, I can imagine it's a more pronounced difference if you're from the USA, uh, but it sounds good. It, sounds, it all sounds like good things in Germany uh, and really just makes me appreciate German lifestyle even more. Uh, so tell me what you think about those culture shocks. Tell me more about each of them and what you think. Tell me if there's any more things that are shocking in German culture as well. Thanks.